Welcome. Welcome to the Wayward Widow. My back's itchy. Don't have a clue why. It's cloudy today. Today is one of those, it's cloudy, it's sunny, it's cloudy, it's sunny, it's cloudy, it's sunny days. It's one of those. Um, I just vacuumed the carpets. I'll give you a rundown. I know you want to know. I vacuumed the carpets. I took the trash out to the dumpster. I went to the bank. I went to the post office. And I went to Redner's, the little corner store. Picked up just a few items. Um, literally like six things. And I worked a little bit on my gem art. I'm, I'm making incredible headway on that. Um, I read probably a good chapter and a half on my Michael J. Fox book. That's due to go back on the 17th, unless I renew it one more time, but I hope to have it done. I'm close to page 100. Um, I also dug out pictures of my dad, because I want to talk about my dad today for a minute. And um, so I still have to call my, late, my health insurance company about a question I have, and I need to wash up these three vinyl floors. That will take like literally five minutes. So I need to do that. Sit meditation, there's these little things, you know. I just made my coffee. I'm on my own right now. Got my coffee. Cafe Mocha. Oh, where'd the cherry go? Dang. Oh, now it went to the bottom. Oh, well. Got to wait till the end for the surprise. Cafe Mocha, French vanilla, with regular coffee in the coffee mate. Mmm. Super ice cold, lots of ice with uh, extra creamy ready whip and a cherry with a stem that's now at the bottom of my glass. I have my pumpkin cup today. Mmm. I'm sorry for those of you who don't like my swallowing. That shit is good. Um, white sweater. I want to say gray leg leggings today, but I can't. Gray leggings. Gray leggings today. Last night we went to um, see a show that um, is a, in a planetarium. It was 45 minutes long. It was very zen-like, very zen-like. Um, it was a nice first date, like a first date, like where I got dressed up a little bit he didn't really have dress up clothes, <laughs> but it's okay. It was fine. You walk in there, they turn down off all the lights anyway. Nobody can see what you're wearing. You know what I mean? Um, and everybody sits in a circle and you, and you spend 45 minutes like this, looking up at the ceiling. Uh, but it was nice. It was nice. We had tickets. So it's the first thing that we did, me and the new guy, that tickets were involved, right? Like we've gone out to eat a few times um, we've gone shopping a lot of times, especially grocery shopping. And, um, but this was our first time that we've done something where tickets were bought. So that's pretty cool. So we still have the ocean coming up and overnight, and we have tickets for a show in November, early November. So that's what we did last night. Like I said, it was only 45 minutes long, and, but it was packed. I, don't, I think there might have been five empty seats, maybe. And it was opening night, so. I want to talk for a minute. It's the 7th of October. You guys know when, you, when you're here with me, I talk numbers, I talk time, I talk dates, calendar things. Um, it's the end of the first week in October. Now you tell me where the first week went. I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue because yesterday was October 1st and here we are, October 7th. This week that we're in now, um, heard something. This week that we're in now, he had an appointment this morning in town. So he did that. He has to go back to the same place for another appointment one day this week. He has two doctor appointments and a therapy appointment. I have a therapy appointment. Um, he has oil painting tomorrow night for three hours. Um, 
it seems like there's something else. But busy, talk, it's like, you know, and in between we sit meditation, he walks early in the morning, we walk together later in the day. And, you know, I work on the plants, like there's, it's, it's, it's one of those weeks that's just gonna, we're gonna blink and it's done and it's gonna be the weekend. Um, and next week is just as crazy. And then he's gone away Yeah, next week he goes away. Anyway, who has weeks like that where you, like you blink and it's like, when did it become October 7th? I don't know. Today is the day, the anniversary of my dad's passing. My dad was in the Coast Guard. My dad's dad was born in Budapest, Hungary. Excuse me, my dad, the, my dad, I'm always gonna, he's always dad to me, was not my, not my biological father, but the man who was my biological father, I never like personally met, like I knew of him when he came to picnics and things like that. But I, like there was, I was a little, little girl when he was around. So um, he was a friend of the family. And um, I found out that he was my dad when I was like, gosh, I think it was 2018 when I found that out. But anyway, my dad, was in the Coast Guard. So I have one little quick picture of him in the Coast Guard. And his, this was taken in New York, according to the back of the picture. My dad was a welder. My dad was a hard worker. My dad was a hard worker. He loved to weld. He had his own business. He, had, he worked for a company and he had a, a pickup truck with a welder on it. And he had his name and the phone number pretty cool. And then this was like one of the last pictures taken of him. He passed in today in 06. So like 18 years, something like that. And I, I miss him like, because as he got older, he got mellow and he got wiser, you know? Um, the three things I can say about my dad, if you had to pick three things to say about your dad, he was a hard worker. He loved my mother unconditionally, and he would do anything for anyone. I mean, he was one of those guys, right? He was one of those guys. He would do, he would do anything for you. I'm telling you, even if I'm in a bad mood and I make a nice coffee and it's all frothy like that, look at that. I went, to, did I say, did I say in yesterday's video that I went to Walmart? I think I did. Um, going to Walmart on a Sunday is such a crapshoot because you don't know if what you want, they're going to have. I wanted to get cottage cheese and they were out of cottage cheese, but I got two of those little four packs with the fruit in it. Um, and that's fine. Uh, good enough. So I want to talk about something serious. I'm going to talk about something serious. Are you afraid to be happy? Think on it a second. Are you afraid to be happy? Have you had a moment where you're afraid to be happy? especially those who have lost someone and have moved forward, maybe started a new relationship. Do you have, or if you're thinking about it, do you get afraid with the thought of being happy? Not that you're afraid to be happy, but you're afraid of what others will say about you being happy and being content and enjoying life. How many people can say, yeah, I've, I've stopped in my tracks because of my fear of what people will say. With my partner, my best friend, my buddy, my companion, my um, meditation um, partner, 
how many things can I say about Sky Moon? My sensei, my muse, uh, we talked so much about after, after the fact, no matter who was going to pass first. And um, he said to me, you know, poet, I I'll cry for a while. Um, I can't cry forever, but I'll cry for a while. And I'll sit a lot of meditation. And um, so he's been gone for going on eight months now. And he was sick for, it depends on when you want to start with his first illness with me. Since 2015, he has something going on, but the big thing, you know, started four years ago and it just snowballed. Um, so when I got to that place of I'm ready to move forward, I think, which is what I kept telling myself, and a lot of my trepidation, my fear, my concern was what other people were going to think about me and my decision. What are people going to think? What are people going to say? What am I going to get in the comments? It's too soon. You should wait a year. You must not have loved your partner. How could you do that? No one could ever replace my partner. No one could ever replace my husband. No one, you know, I expected all that and then some, and I did get some of that. I did get some of that. And there were times where I thought, I'm not going to move ahead because I don't want people, I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want to disappoint people and their opinions. I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want people to think badly of me because I want someone in my life. You know, I have a candle that's lit here. You wouldn't know it because I'm. You see that? Um, I don't want anyone to think badly of me because I want to be happy. Because my best buddy passed away. There we go. And I couldn't stop that. So, so there was times that I just waited. And then when I put my Facebook dating profile up. I took it down instantly. As soon as the first man's face popped up, I went into a panic and I took it down <laughs> the whole profile. I gave myself more than a week, like 10 days before I put it back up again. And so I look at everything that's happened as timing, that this was when I was supposed to put my profile up. And I honestly think, and I said this, I think in another video, I feel like Sky is just absolutely almost as though he's like a puppeteer and he's just moving this man and I into the, the same airspace over and over again. That's what I feel. Um, but I wonder if I'm feeling this way and I've felt this way, this guilt, this survivor's guilt, like how long should I wait by myself before I find someone to bring into my life and find happiness. Whether it's happiness watching a movie together or it's you laugh at you know a book you're reading that's a good book or you, you take a walk together and hold hands or you know you, you, you go and see a show together and you're like out and out and about in public and you're living life. How long do you wait to do all those things to make people okay with your decision, you know, that people aren't going to come back at you and say, it's only been six months, seven months. Like, what are you doing? You're moving too fast. Don't move too fast. I've heard that a lot from a lot of people, like people I have a lot of respect for have said, just go slow. Just go slow. And I'm thinking, and this is just me being really real. I'm thinking, okay, I'm in my 66th rotation around the sun. 
The man that I'm seeing is in his 69th rotation around the sun, and he's just about to finish that in the next couple months. He will finish 69 rotations around the sun, which puts him then the day after his birthday in his 70th year. So you got to think on that a second. Now, a lot of people have said and will say, well, the older you get, the people that you date are going to most likely have health issues. And that's right. That's true. I'm not going to argue or debate that. Absolutely. We, we can pretty much expect that. But I can tell you what, some mornings I get out of bed and all my joints, like my knee, my left knee, my shoulders crack like crazy. My spine bothers me more. Um, but I'm also more active. I'm taking more walks. He and I take walks like almost every single day. He takes a walk every day. But I walk usually every day later than he does because I'm, I'm not a 6.30 in the morning walking kind of girl. She don't do that, but I'm walking more. I'm, I'm sitting meditation more. I'm dancing more, which is a lot of activity for me. I'm Irish and I'm really thin boned. And my, my new PCP said, you know, how about a bone scan? Would you be open to getting a bone scan? Just so we kind of see what's going on. And I'm like, nah, not yet. No, let's just wait on that. Um, my insurance company will pay for that, I believe. Um, I don't even know what, I'd have to Google what a bone scan is exactly, how they do it. But um, I'm, not a, I'm not a spring chicken, I'm not young, okay? I've, I've been through marriages and divorces, he's been through marriages and divorces. Okay, so we, we've done that. I've had children, he has children. Grandchildren, grandchildren. Okay, done that. So if you have children, that means you've been intimate with someone in both respects, right? So we've done that. That's, that's not a new thing. You know, we're not like 15, 14, 15, 16, thinking about all that. That's like, <laughs> we're all kind of on the other side of that in a lot of ways, you know? So I'm on Medicare, he's on Medicare. I'm collecting Social Security, he's collecting Social Security. It's at that time, that, that stage. So when people say to me, just go slow, um, I think on that and I'm like, in which respect? In what part? What part go slow? Because I know, and I'm just, I'm just throwing everything out on the table to give everybody food for thought. Whether you're just newly dating, whether you just went through a divorce, whether you lost someone a year ago or two months ago or 10 months ago or whatever, and you're thinking that you don't want to be alone the rest of your life, but you're just thinking, oh, and by the way, I colored my hair. Look, the roots are gone. <laughs> I did it this morning. Nice and easy, extra light blonde or something like that. Anyway, so, um, what was I saying? So, shoot, totally lost my train of thought when I talked about my hair. See, when, see what happens when you get this old? So, I'll just start from scratch. So when I'm thinking about the going slow, I'm thinking, okay, which part? Is it, like, don't run off and get married, go slow. I get that. You know, I get that. I've been single since 2015. I wasn't married to Sky when he passed away. I wasn't. Nine years had gone by and him and I weren't married. We didn't file taxes together, none of that. So, um, I've been a single woman a very long time. Getting married is not a must for me, okay? It's not a must. So, I'm not in any big hurry to get married. Um, finances, finances, financially, my rent is paid. My utilities are paid. There's food in the fridge. I don't own a car anymore. You guys know that saga. Um, she regrets that for you people who said, don't get rid of your car. I should have listened to you. 
That's where you should have reached through the camera and shook me by the shoulders. But what, you know, I needed the extra funds. So I don't have any expenses with the car right now. Hopefully that will change in the future, but right now I'm, I'm okay. I can use Uber. Um, and my friend is giving me a ride. My guy friend is giving me a ride and my old friends sometimes give me a ride if I need to. So financially I'm okay. I'm not looking for someone to pay my bills, right? We pretty much do a 50, 50 split. If we do something out from here or whatever, and, um, he'll surprise me with little things and I'll surprise him. Like he got me a card on Saturday or Friday. He brought me in a card for our, the end of our seven week anniversary. So when I was out the other day with my old, old, old friend, I went in the Dollar Tree and I got him a card. Couldn't find one that was great, you know? So I just wrote a little message in a card that was okay enough. And do you guys know that on the, the 19th of this month, there's a holiday called Sweetest Day. Excuse me. It's the coffee. It's called Sweetest Day. And it's for women to do something nice for a man. Like get him flowers or candy or something like that. Did you know that? There's cards in the store for Sweetest Day. And um, my guy is not going to be around on that date. He's going away for five days. He said four days, but it's five days. And he'll be out of state. Um, but yeah, there's a holiday called Sweetest Day, which I never knew. Um, look it up, look it up. And so we, you know, we'll split things. Like if we go out to eat, he'll pay if I, or I'll pay. Um, we, we don't go out to eat much because we're, we're pretty good at putting something really quick and dirty. As Sky would say, just make something quick and dirty meaning a little sandwich, you know, some ham and cheese on a roll, quick and dirty. <laughs> Sky would say that all the time. Just make something quick and dirty. Um, and <laughs> I have to tell you this, okay? I have, I'm not a great joke teller, but there was this joke that I heard somewhere and I told Skye, because he loved to go into work when he was at Lowe's and try and tell a joke, but he could never get it right. So anyway, I got to tell you this joke. And then I'll get back on the, on the subject of finances, intimacy, all that. Okay, so there's a man and a woman and they're golfing on an 18 hole golf course. They don't know each other. And the man is farther ahead on the golf course. The woman is behind, right? And so she goes up to the man and she says, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but can you tell me what hole I'm on? And he says, well, I'm on hole five, which means you're on hole four because you're behind me. And she says, okay, thank you so much. I'm just trying to figure this game out. And she goes back to where she was. So they keep golfing and golfing and golfing. And then a little bit later, she comes up to him again and she says, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but um, can you tell me again what hole I'm on? And he says, well, I'm on hole 10, which means you're on hole nine because you're one hole behind me. And she says, okay, thank, thank you so much. I'm so sorry, I keep bothering you. And he's like, it's fine, it's fine. So they, they keep golfing, you know, and keep going up. And they get almost to the end and she comes up to him again and she says, I just have to ask you one more time. Can you tell me what hole I'm on? And he says, well, you're on hole 17 because I'm on hole 18. So you're one hole behind me. And this is the, this is the end for me. I'm done. I'm going to go into the clubhouse. You know, enjoy the rest of your game. So he goes on into the clubhouse. He goes to the bar. He orders a drink. And a little while later, the woman comes walking in and sits down next to him. And she's thanking him profusely for the help as to what hole she was on. So he says, oh, don't worry about it. And she's like, oh, I'd love to buy you a drink for your help. Okay, so he, she buys him a drink. And they get chatting and she says to him, what do you do for a living? And he starts blushing and laughing a little bit. And he's like, I'd really rather not talk about it. 
And she goes, no, really, what do you do for a living? And he says, okay, well, I sell tampons. And she starts laughing hysterically, like laughing, like almost falling out of her chair laughing. And he's like, what's so funny? She goes, you're not going to believe this. I sell toilet paper, so I'm still one hole behind you. I'm sorry. I love that joke. I told that joke to this guy. <laughs> he had me tell it twice so he could try to remember it. And <laughs> he went into work, totally botched it, came home and told me he totally botched it. But he said, tell it to me again. <laughs> and he would laugh so hard that tears would come out of his eyes. So anyway, there, I told you a joke. Pass it along. Okay, so we talked about finances for me and a man. We talked about um, marriage, which I'm in no hurry for the, an actual marriage. Um, we talked about intimacy. You know, I've had kids, he has kids, which means we both have done the deed, you know, over time. And um, so when people say to me, just take your time, what is it that is meant by that? And I'm being very serious when I ask that. Does it, is it like, okay, because you're older, don't run off to Las Vegas and get married because like the man might be a creep and maybe he's love bombing you. There's all these new phrases, ghosting, love bombing where a man like showers you with everything in the beginning and then he turns out to be a real you know what. And so I'm, I'm, I'm like, what, what should I not, what should I be taking my time with? I've already been intimate with a man. So, you know, I'm not saying with this man, I'm saying with a man over time. So it's not like that would be my first time. Um, I'm not interested in getting married. We split the financial picture. Like he paid for the tickets left, left for last night and I paid for the tickets for November. And he paid for the hotel that we're gonna go to for the overnight at the end of the month for the ocean. And I'm going to get the food and we're gonna pack a cooler and I'm gonna get the food at Walmart, which is going to be a whole lot cheaper than buying food on the road. I'm going to get like easy snacky things, right? So I'm going to take care of that part. And um, so that's all even. I'm just like, what part should I be waiting on, you know, and taking my time on? And I mean that seriously when I say it. I'm like, I, I don't know. And And so it brings me back to the question of, are you happy or are you afraid to be happy is what I asked. Are you afraid to go down that road, down that path of even just going out to coffee with someone? I'm not saying getting into a relationship, having them stay over or anything, but even going out to co for coffee. Are you hesitant? And this is just a general question. I'm not asking anyone specifically. Have you gotten hesitant with even the thought of it for fear of what other people would say. Like it's too soon. It's because I'm watching some YouTubers who've lost their spouses, right? And I'm talking spouses. These people were married when their husband or wife died. Sky and I were not married. Sky and I were best buds. We were, ab we were companions like this, right? But we were not married and hadn't been married for years. But for the people who were married, um, sleeping in the same bed, which Sky and I were not, we each had our own room, that even the thought, if you're six months down the road, if you're eight months down the road, if you're a year down the road, does even the thought of going out scare you f for fear of what others are going to say? Because a lot of what we do in our life is dictated by what, by what we think others are going to think of us and say about us. You know, if we're thinking of selling our home and moving, if we're thinking of getting another car, if we're thinking of um, taking a trip, like I'm gonna be taking a trip with this man overnight. We're getting one room, one bed. 
I'm 65 plus. He's 68 plus. So, you know, we'll let that just as it is. But I wonder how many people have not pursued something they really want for fear of what others are going to think of them. Look at this weirdness. I left my hair in, in the towel too long this morning because I just was lazy. Um, I have thought a lot about the go slow and um, I'm just like going. Uh, not slow, not fast, I'm just going. I'm enjoying sitting meditation and I love having a meditation partner. I do. Um, it's really nice to have someone to have a meal with. He's not here all the time. Like, especially lately, he's been extremely busy. So he's not here. Most of the time, he's not here. I'm here on my own. I'm doing my own thing. I'm taking care of my home. Um, I'm chatting on Messenger. I'm making videos. I'm, he's doing his thing. And so, but it's nice when he is here to have a meal with someone. It's nice on the nights that he stays over with me, and yes, he does, um, to have someone to hold me through the night when I haven't had that in forever. Um, that's a really nice feeling um, to wake up to someone. He fixes my tea. He brings me a hot cup of tea. Last night I had a panic attack out of the blue. I was just falling asleep and bam, it hit me. I had one of those dreams where you feel like you're falling over a cliff, 31 minutes. You know, it feels like you're falling over a cliff and you jump and then I had a panic attack and it was really bad. And um, he sat up with me. He said, do you want me to get you tea? Would that help? I said, no, I didn't want tea. I took my, I remembered I hadn't taken my nighttime pill, so I took my nighttime pill. I took an ibuprofen. Um, and he said, you're really shaking. Would it help if you put your head on my chest and I could just hold you? And it helped so much just to just cuddle up with him. He's a big guy, he's, you know, and I'm a little tiny girl. So it's just this feeling of security and warmth and and just being enveloped in just this love, this incredible, amazing love. And I just feel Sky's presence, like I'm gonna move you over here with her because she's alone and she gets scared a lot. So you're here alone and she's here alone and, and you, we're just gonna make a match here. And I feel like Sky's doing that over and over. And I said, I think in one of my videos where Sky never answered the phone with hello, and he never hung up with, with goodbye. He would say, uh, check you later, when he hung up, check you later. And when he answered, he would say, um, what's going on? What's going on with that Tennessee draw? And my new man says, um, what do you know? They both start with the word what? Like, what do you know? What do you know? Like, I just shook my head the first time I heard him say that. Like, did he just say something other than hello? There's, there's a lot that makes me think sky's up here, you know? So think about it. For those of you who've, who are newly single or who have just gone through a divorce or who have lost a loved one, or if, if it's not a husband or wife that you lost, but a child, a sibling, a parent, a best friend, a pet, and you're so lost in, in grief and you start to, you know, see the sunshine a little bit. Have you asked yourself, are you afraid to be happy? Does fear come into it at all that you're afraid of what others are going to think? If you start to feel alive and you start to feel human again and you 
and you smile and you laugh and you 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 look forward into things that are going to happen and there's there's like this newfound purpose um because I've gone through that and there are times I still go through that you know what are people going to think I'm in my eighth month without him you know but I know what I had with him and he was amazing <laughs> and he loved my golf joke and um he told me that turtle wouldn't bite me and the turtle bit me so if you're brand new here and it's already 35 minutes long so why not so if you're brand new here and you don't know why i have a little turtle pond going on here let me move my daddy's pictures i have a little turtle pond just ignore my iced coffee there but i have a little turtle pond here there's some ashes there um and i'll tell you the turtle story sky is from chattanooga tennessee born and raised he spent a lot of time in tennessee he spent some time in georgia he spent some time in california quite a bit of time more than 20 years he also spent uh 14 years here in pennsylvania the state that he said he would never go to because it's so cold but he came up here for me so anyway he got a job at lowe's and he would come home and he would say to me why are y'all so mean up here why are y'all so mean um he was working in the electrical department and he would ask me that often why are y'all so mean and i'm like i didn't think we were like I don't know. I, isn't there mean people everywhere? But isn't there nice people everywhere? And he was like, I don't know. I just feel like I just meet all the mean ones. The, the, the mean people up here. I'm like, I'm really sorry you're experiencing that, Sky. Let me know when you meet a really nice person. Tell me about that one. So we were taking a walk one day. We were walking along the river. And this little turtle, this turtle like this, was going along the path. And I said to him, being a country boy growing up in Chattanooga, Tennessee and spending his like childhood in the woods, being Mr. Nature Boy, he knew all about turtles or so I thought. And so I said to him, can I pick that turtle up? And he said, yeah, go ahead. I said, is it gonna bite me? And he said, it's not gonna bite you, poet. That's not the kind of turtle that, that bites. It's not gonna bite you. I said, are you sure? And he said, I'm sure. So I bend down and I pick the turtle up by the side, by its side, like this, gingerly. And that dang turtle spun its head around and bit me. It bit me. <laughs> I dropped the turtle. No harm was done to the turtle. I looked over at Sky, and I said, I thought you said that turtle wasn't going to bite me. And he said, well, see, even the turtles are mean in Pennsylvania. So that's the turtle story if you've never heard it. And that's why I collect turtles. That's why there's all these little turtle things and why there's so much talk about turtles when it comes to my... Um, partner who's now in his rebirth and maybe he came back as a turtle I don't know I'm gonna go if you guys have stayed with me for 38 minutes God bless you I wanted to talk about my daddy I miss him I love him he was wonderful um he was a good he was good people my dad was good people and um I wanted to talk about and needed to talk about the do you think you're afraid to be happy for fear of what other people are going to say or how they're going to judge you? So I try to come on here and talk about the things that I've gone through and am going through and what I think about and how I'm trying to gauge where I am emotionally, financially, physically, spiritually in my life right now post going on eight months since Sky passed on. So that's what I try to do. 
So thank you for choosing this channel. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to head over to Messenger and see what's going on over there because I haven't been on there yet today. So I'm going to see who's talked to me so I can talk back to you and with you. Um, if you want to talk to me privately, go over to Poet Quinn on Messenger on Facebook. I really don't do much on Facebook at all. Um, I'm rarely over there, maybe once a week. But you can go over, you can send me a message and it will show up over on Messenger. The only thing I ask is that you have a picture and that you put in your, you know, the little box that, that you're from my channel so that I know who you are and why you're over there because otherwise I'll just delete or block, you know, because I've had to do that in the past with people. So if you want to talk to me privately, you, you don't want to throw comments out for everybody to see, feel free to just pop on over there and I'll talk with you over there. I love you guys. Please be safe. Um, inch by inch, just keep going. I will keep sharing everything I'm comfortable sharing, but I'm learning every day that life is so fragile and so finite. And every day I'm hearing some crazy story about someone who's passed away, whether they're 25 or they're 88. All I know is as long as I'm breathing, I want to get the most out of this winter experience that I can because I'm not at my age, I'm not going to see another spring, another summer or another fall, meaning age wise, like this last block, 65 to whatever, this is it. There's no more for me in this form. I'm done. So I have to maximize it, you know, and maximizing it means dance, eat, walk, look at the world, say your prayers, feel blessed because you are every day that you're given is a day that you can meet someone new, that you can talk to people, that you can help someone. You can make a new friend and you can love because life is for the living. Life is for the living, right? That's why it's called life. Death, we know what, you know, but life is for the living. So I'll talk to you soon.